Welcome everybody to another video uh, from the Amaranth add-on. Um, this time is version 0.8. Still not 1.0, I don't know why, but it's 0.8. The, la the last one was 0.5, if I'm not wrong. I've been working on it on the GitHub uh, repo, but this is like the, the official release. Um, most of the features uh, for this release were part of the Pampa project also known as Caminandes 2, this open movie project made um, by the Blender Foundation at the Blender Institute. And I'm going to go through some of them. Um, the first one is cycle samples per scene. Uh, this has to do with rendering and with cycles. Um, when you work, I put this, this uh, screenshot here that is actually part of, of one of the Caminandes files. Uh, this, this one I have right here. Um, when you work with um, many, many shots or, or with other people and you want to share, say, um, compositing notes or uh, render layers and stuff like that and you don't want to make them all, all over again every time, what you can do is uh, work with different scenes. So you have one scene for, uh, say, the lighting, um, another scene for effects or whatever, and the compositing, you do it in a separate scene. So that way you can just append this scene uh, to other uh, other shots. So basically you just have an empty file that doesn't have anything and no, no new objects, no faces, no anything, but uh, render layers on the, the compositing setup. So um, this makes it super handy, but um, the reason I made this little thing here in the sampling uh, panel for cycles is that if you want to do render tests and you want to um, tweak the samples value, the, basically the quality of the render, uh, you have to go to each scene and go back and tweak each value individually. So I just made this little list that goes through all the um, scenes in this blend file and shows the uh, render samples. Uh, it works for path tracing, but also for uh, branch path tracing. So yeah, basically it's just a way to change the samples without having to go to the scene and change them manually. Uh, it's the same as the render samples, by the way. Another option, oh, this doesn't work, of course, in Blender internal uh, because it's uh, for cycles. Another one in the render area is the final resolution, which is super handy. It basically just displays the, the size. Uh, of the of the final render. So if you are rendering full size, 100%, doesn't make any difference. But if you go 50 or any other percentage, it will change. It will show you the value here, and it also works for um, border render. So you can see how big the border render is going to be. Um, now, yeah, basically that. I, I find it handy, especially when sometimes you want to render like a super poster and you go 500 whatever percent, and then you want to know the actual size. Um, another option is the, oh, the scene debug panel. This is something I wanted to make for a while and never managed to, to do it. Basically, it's just a panel where I can throw all kinds of uh, info about my file, my blend file. For example, I want to know uh, how many lamps I have, how many, uh, what are their settings, uh, or pff, I don't know, everything. <laughs> uh, I, will, I will think of more stuff. and. Uh, just for now, I, I added some features for the lighting part because I've been doing lighting now for a, a feature movie here in Argentina called Kiribati, and I'm also doing compositing. And um, I'm working with files that I've never seen before because some other people made them on the shaders and everything. So I don't know exactly why there was so much noise in this scene, for example. So I made uh, the first feature, which is a list cycles materials using whatever shader. Um, let me show you. I have this. I have this shot. I can show you right now, but I'm gonna do it here on the Caminandes file. So I had this shot that was super dark, and I wanted to change the. Um, I wanted to to do some lighting on it, and I'm. I was having a lot of, lot of noise on it, and I didn't know why. Uh, suddenly, I realized I made this little thing because I wanted to know if. Well, actually, I I wrote it here in the console. I wanted to do some uh, some checking to see if there was any mesh emitting um, material. So that way 
I can see like, hey, why there's light here if it's not supposed to be Are there any light? So um, I just made it now a nice add-on, nice part of the Amaranth add-on that you can just like select uh, which shader and then you can just list. And it will show you here in the scene back panel under scene. Um, it will show you the materials that have this shader, uh, if it's linked and the users. Um, I find it useful actually. And uh, for some shaders also, they will show the roughness. Uh, if they have any roughness, for example, the glossy, um, you can see like, uh, where is the roughness for this material or whatever. Um, here they're all linked, but uh, yeah. The list can get pretty long, so you can also just clear that. Um, I find it useful. I don't know if you uh, going to find it useful, but it's fun. And another, oh, by the way, it doesn't work right at the moment for uh, groups. It doesn't look inside the groups now. I have, I'm working on it, um, but I didn't run into any um, case. I really wanted to look into group groups. If any of you know how to do it, uh, please check the code and, and submit a patch or whatever. The second is lamps list. This option is also inside this in the bag. Uh, it's, a, it's a basically a list that you can, it, it gets collapsed by default. Um, it just shows the list of lamps you have in the scene. It's pretty simple actually. Um, here, they're all grayed out because they're not in this scene. But if I go to the lighting scene, I should see it here. Lamps, yeah, here. I see there are two uh, lamps here and there are other two that are not in the scene. You can just click on any light and it will select it. Um, it shows the samples if you're using, which you should be using because it's much more uh, flexible. Branch pad tracing is gonna display the um, samples per lamp. So, and also the size, because you know, if you have the uh, bigger size or your lamp and cycles, it means the, the shadow is gonna be more diffuse. So more spread. So you need more samples. So I include this value just, just so it's easier. Like, hey, this lamp has like 1.0 size and only two samples. Maybe that's why I have so much noise. So you just can increase the value right from there. Uh, you can also hide and uh, hide for visibility and for render. And it also shows you the, the type, the lamp type and this with the icon. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it for the for this in the bag. I plan to work more on it because it's I find it handy, and uh, maybe add some mesh lights or some other information I find useful. If you have any idea, just pop me on uh, anywhere on Twitter, Twitter or, or Facebook or whatever. Um, bone motion pads. This is for animation. This was actually a request by uh, Hialti from the uh, Project Pampa from Caminandes too. Um, so he had some, um, he wanted to, he uses uh, motion pads a lot, but turns out that you can't uh, clear the motion pad for more than a bone at once. Uh, so if you have the motion pad for many bones, you have to go and clear each one individually. So I just, I basically just made a, an option in the display part um, for the bone. So you just select the bone and you calculate no, armature. Yes, armature. Uh, you calculate the path. Um, you can tell, let's do it fast. So it calculates the path, the path and it will show you um, where this um, object is, uh, is going, is moving. So yeah, I actually chose, a, I selected a bone that doesn't have much uh, action happening. So let's do it with another one, a longer, range there here. So this is the bone path. Um, if I want to clear both of them, I have to go and select clear um, from the motion path here. This is the original one. You have to go and click the, to clear, which is a bit slow. So I just made a, a stupid loop. It just goes through all the bones and clears them all and made a big button here, clear all motion paths. And another option is that it, it's always by default one and 250 and it doesn't respect the, the, the range, the actual range you're using at the moment. So I made it, I made a button for that, set frame range and it will change the start and end. And if I'm not wrong, it also, yeah, it respects. So if you have a, a preview range, it will even change the button and it will adjust it to, to that. So 
yeah, that, those, these are two little options that uh, Hialti asked for, and it was nice, fun playing with it. And uh, Basam helped me with it, so thank you, Basam. I remember it was a late night in the Blender Institute. So what else? File browser, libraries bookmark. Uh, I thought I explained this one, but I, no, it wasn't uh, in, two, in 0 0.5. So this one basically shows a list of, of um, here, of libraries that you have. So they are all linked by, to this file. So you can just click on it and you can browse to the library. Um, I also find it very useful because it's um, actually I could move this button, this current Blender folder here, maybe. Um, but it's it's very handy, so you can just go and files related to this blend file super uh, fast. Extras, miscellaneous, uh, control tab to switch. Yeah, uh, another um, feature request by Healthy. Uh, control tab to switch between the dope sheet and the graph editor. Uh, if you're inside the dope sheet, you can hit shift tab to uh, switch between the action and the action editor and the dope sheet. Uh, that's a little one. Color management presets. Uh, this one I implemented the other day because I noticed that some of the options here you can't save as presets uh, in Blender. So just made a preset for that. Um, so basically if you have like a specific look and whatever option here, you can just save it as whatever and it will be here. So if you have a different one that you like and you want to make another that is awesomer, uh, you can just save it and then you can just switch between them and um, yeah, it will get saved. What else? Um, Mesh editing. Uh, this is the last one, and uh, you can actually see it here in the in the GIF. Pretty simple. Um, it basically shows a um, it's an option that um, we had an issue with Coro and Caminantes that some parts of of him were not uh, symmetrical. So by mistake or whatever, they they got some vertices were misaligned, and it was driving nuts our rigor Juan Pablo. So. For example, you say you have um, you have this mesh that is completely symmetrical, and you have some parts that are not. Like this is completely different from here. So what you can do is now search for um, for find asymmetric, uh, and it will select the vertices that are not symmetrical. Like they're not uh, like this side and this side are different. So it, it might be a bit slow if you have a big character with many um, vertices, so you just uh, uh, wait. <laughs> so once you find the asymmetric, you, should, you can just make symmetric and it will make the other side um, symmetric the same place, uh, which is super handy. And especially when you have a big character and want to look like, where is this thing, um, vertice that it, vertex that is, non-symmetric or has weird coordinates. Um, yeah, that. These are not in any menu. Uh, maybe I could add it to a menu. Um, for now, you can just uh, search for symmetric um, or no, find asymmetric, find. Oh, it's in mesh edit mode. Symmetric, and then you will find these two. Um, and the last bit is for the removed features. How did you remove features? Yes, I did remove because uh, some of them got uh, included in Blender. Um, and I'm around 0 0.6, I think, or five. I added an option to control the viewport um, of materials in the, in the the alpha of the materials in the viewport, um, which basically, well, now it doesn't work because you have to first enable transparency my, my patch had a button for that. And um, you can just control how transparent is this, uh, this, this uh, material in the viewport. And of course it doesn't affect the, the render at all. It's just uh, for visualizing, especially when you have like a character that has a transparent iris, no, transparent um, cornea. And you want to see the iris, for example, you can just change the transparency and it's nicer in the viewport. 
Uh, material indicator for particles. Yep, this is also now on trunk and in a much better shape because it actually you can just pick from the list. Um, before mine was a, a little hack. Um, and Shift Z for render view is now officially available on Blender 2.70, which is awesome. And the shortcut that is not available on uh, on Blender 2.70 and that I still have in Amaranth is Alt Shift C to change the only render um, setting thing, um, which is also handy. So yeah, that's um, that's pretty much it for for Amaranth. Um, I hope you like it. If you have any any ideas or whatever, I'm not a developer, so I just um, I just spend some time uh, playing with this Python thing just to to speed up my workflow when I'm working on production. So um, don't expect don't don't ask for like a, something super advanced because I might not be able to do it. But if other developer can do it and wants to put it here in the Amaranth uh, toolset, which is kind of a mess. Uh, it doesn't have a category even, it's like everywhere. <laughs> um, just feel free to bug me and we'll try to make it happen. So that's it for now. Um, I hope you like it. Just go to pabloasquez.org slash amaranth. I'm going to put it also on the add-ons contrib on uh, Blender, on the official Git repo. And it's also on GitHub if you want the latest, latest. And this is like the stable release, but uh, the latest, I always put it here. On, uh, on GitHub, so you can actually go and, and get the latest source, uh, just uh, download zip and you'll get it. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.